Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43-point night for Tyrese Halliburton! How do you like that, buddy? Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! And Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Hello, everybody. Welcome aboard another edition of Indiana Sports Feed Radio coming to you here on this Monday. Thanks a lot for being with us. Greg Rakestraw joining us right off the bat. Greg, sir, how are you? Friends, it sounds like you saw a little, uh, some pretty good basketball emotions today on Sunday of this weekend. Uh, yes, sir. I was down at Southridge taking in the Jeffersonville Evansville Harrison game. Heck of a game, went right down to the wire. Jeffersonville pulling that out at the uh, at the end with some great play. Um, they have a guy named Michael Cooper who started looking like Michael Cooper. Uh, he pumped in, I think, 13 fourth quarter points and uh, helped Jeff edge uh, Evansville Harrison. That was a heck of a game that could have gone either way, Greg. Well, I had the pleasure of doing both of those teams earlier this year. I saw Harrison one time. They played in the North Central event, the Paul Logan Holiday event. Carmel got him that day, and that looked like a bad loss then. Carmel kind of rallied from that point in time to at least be an over 500 team this year. I saw Jeff when I think they were playing their best basketball up until the postseason, and that was when they played up in Kokomo and made the championship game and hung with the Wildcats till about the three- or four-minute mark uh, of the fourth quarter. That game was the Saturday before Christmas on December the 23rd. So I know that Jeffersville had some dips at, at times in January. Um, I know of the three teams that are in the semi-state with them, they played Center Grove, and Center Grove beat them by 20. Um, Jeffersonville will face a, a, a tough task in Lawrence North, but I firmly believe that, that Jeff can hang with any of those teams. I'll be on the call of the games at Newcastle for IHSAT.org on, on Saturday. And I can make a case for all four of those teams having a chance to come out of there and represent the South in the 4A state championship game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to make that trip up there. I, I, ironically, that Jeffersonville won't be playing at Seymour, uh, which is right uh, up the road from them. Uh, but the uh, new format, which you redraw, and I, do you think that that puts some more excitement into this? Um the layout i think sure i i think that's that there's something to that i think the biggest thing is is that the, the redraw is one thing um but really what it's about is being able to have 32 teams get to the semi-state round you know you double the number of teams that are still playing you double the number of communities uh that you know can still talk about their team being in the semi-state so this is the second year of this new format where you have the redraw, but also where kind of the sites are flexible. And, you know, the 4A semi-state, you know, had largely been at Seymour most years, not every year. There was one year that Senator Grove and Ben Davis both went down to Washington to play their their, their uh, semi-state game. That year, I think Silver Creek and Axe, you know, played in the, in the 3A semi-state that was held at Seymour. But because of, of this format now, or say in the past, it would have been Harrison, Jeff, but then Center Grove and Franklin that would have gone to Seymour this past weekend. Now that you play just one game, frankly, you make it kind of more likely that there are three Indianapolis area teams as we have, which is why Jeffersonville is making a bit more of a drive for the semi state than they would have in years gone by. What else is uh, – I, I, obviously, I've not checked the schedule. I uh, was busy doing what I was doing and had Indiana yesterday. Who else are, is playing at Newcastle? And then I know there's a couple of other sites. Correct. So you've got eight teams left. So uh, just, just so quickly thumb you through the sites uh, that are taking place um, on the south southern half of the draw. 1A is Washington, 2A is Southport, 3A is Seymour, 4A uh, is Newcastle. 
in the northern half of the draw. 4A is Elkhart, 3A, Logansport, 2A, Lafayette Jeff, and 1A is Michigan City. So in terms of the 4A championship, again, game number one, Ben Davis Center Grove at Newcastle, followed by Jeffersonville, Lawrence North. Then on the northern half of the draw, Fishers and Crown Point playing game number one, Mishawaka and Fort Wayne Wayne playing game number two. Winners meet on Saturday at those two locations, and then the championship is laid one week this year, uh, again, because of the first and second rounds taking place uh, at uh, Gamebridge Fieldhouse. We'll play the semi-states this Saturday. State championship is not for two more weeks, Saturday, March 30th at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Get a little extra practice in for those teams that are uh, going for the big crowd. But uh, I can't wait to make the trip to Newcastle. Well, I, well, I can wait to make the trip, but I can't wait to get there. Uh, what uh, a phenomenal place to go. The, I, I've only been there to call a game myself, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, some great teams, both all, all, both games, uh, all, all four teams that are there, uh, amazing. And I cannot wait to see that. It was awesome just going to uh, Southridge, uh, Greg, I had not been to that gym. And so my dumb butt first, I go right to the school. Uh, but the <laughs> Memorial gymnasium is not at the school. It's about five minutes away. Uh, but it's one of those great old Indiana gyms you walk into the sub, uh, it's below ground a little bit, but it's just the perfect bowl. Great. That should have been the the, the blueprint for every gym in, in this state well for for about a 15 year period it was and so that yeah. is one of the great sunken in gyms obviously the one you are going to this week is the biggest of them all and of all the great venues that i get to go to newcastle is the one that is the most breathtaking to me just because you are still just dumbstruck every time you walk in and you see everything that is below you now, that has been modified, not in terms of seating, but in terms of accessibility. And that's kind of the only knock against Southridge is that it's not very ADA compliant these days. Uh, it's also part of the reason why they stopped building those gyms. But in terms of the viewer experience, the cacophony of sound and the sheer history, there aren't many that are like that one, that's for sure. Absolutely. I am looking so forward to it, man. Uh, and then you're going to be on the call for that. Like you said, where can the people find that? All right. So the semi-state games are all behind the IHSAATV.org paywall. So uh, the best value in sports you can have is pay for all the games. For 12 bucks, you get a game. Spend 20 and you get access to all 24 games that are played at eight different sites around the state of Indiana. That way you can just bop around from game to game. If your game isn't overly competitive, go find another one. You know, you know be able to, there's three different windows, so to speak, at 10 a.m., noon, and 8 o'clock on Saturday. For 20 bucks, you get access to all 24 games. Frankly, your best bet, go to a game. If you're a Jeffersville fan, go see Newcastle's Historic Fieldhouse. Go see the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. If you want a touch of Southern Indiana, you need at least fried chicken. It's right next to the high school. If not, go to Mancino's. You'll have a you'll have a great pizza or grinder if, if you go there. Uh, trust me, spoken like a true pro, knowing that much. Um, but if you're not going to go to a game, spend the twenty bucks. IHSATV.org, and you can watch parts or all of all twenty four games that will take place on Saturday. That's the right. That's the ticket, peeps. That's the ticket, but nothing like uh, seeing it in person, let me tell you. And I cannot wait to uh, experience that again up there. Um, what? Uh, any surprises over the weekend? You know, I, I would say some slight ones. You know, nothing of a, of a massive nature. I think some people were surprised at the way that, that Fishers handled um, Kokomo for a second time. You know, because those two played December the 9th at Southport Fieldhouse and Fishers won by 22. Fishers this time won by double digits again. Uh, it was more of a 10 to 15 point game this time. This is a this is a Kokomo team that hadn't lost since December the 30th uh, and a Kokomo team that had a really good win against Indianapolis Cathedral, who's, you know, a, a top 10 level team about a month ago it was by far the best competition they had played over the last couple of months of the season. 
So we all kind of thought, okay, you know, maybe Fishers can win this again, but maybe not as convincingly. And again, they they were never seriously threatened by Kokomo. Kokomo never had an answer for Fishers. And again, this is a Fishers team that lost their best player before the season uh, when Jalen Harrelson opted to go play at Laporte La Lumiere for his junior year. Fishers has two freshmen that see time that are both guards in Randy Zachary and, and Jason Gardner Jr. And yes, that is the son of of uh, former Indiana Mr. Basketball and current University of Arizona staffer Jason Gardner. Um, they, they've got just other great role players, whether it's the shooter in Taden Metzger, uh, John Anthony Hall, who is going to be a, a football receiver, uh, Keenan Garner, uh, who unfortunately rolled his ankle late in the game. So he's questionable coming up for the semi-state games this weekend. Uh, but Fishers, Fishers is something, and Fishers has been good for some time. But in their, you know, rebirth the, as a high school, this is their 18th year. They had not gotten out of the sectional uh, until this year, and they may go all the way to the state championship game and win it. They've got a dynamic young head coach in Garrett Weiniger that a lot of us kind of wonder is his future maybe in college basketball uh, because he's really in his late 20s, early 30s. But he's been coaching uh, a, a varsity team now. For the last five years, it's his fourth year at Fisher, spent one year at Warren. He's a former Indiana University basketball manager. And as you well know, those guys tend to go out and be successful in life. So um, that's a team to watch. If you have not, I know Jeffersville played in their tournament, but did not play them because Jeff got knocked off by a good South Bend Riley team in the first game of that holiday tournament. So Fisher's is, is definitely one of the stories to watch. Um, in 3A, it is wide open. There is a chance that Scottsburg could claim the 3A state championship. Uh, they're going to see Garen at some point in time again, uh, likely, uh, whom, whom they played in the, in the semi-state last year. In 2A, can anybody match Brownstown Central? I think the team that has the best chance is the one that they draw uh, in the opening round in terms of part tutor in the morning game. And then in 1A, there's a good chance the state championship game really takes place at the Hatchet House on Saturday morning because number one and number two play each other. Bar Reeve and Evansville Christian. Man, I am so looking forward to it. That is a great story of Fisher's coach, uh, and we will be keeping an eye on him. And you, you think Scottsburg will draw any anyone, uh, any fans in Seymour? <laughs> they had about half the gym full, uh, and obviously they get the benefit of the uh, of the hometown draw, having the twenty one mile drive from exit twenty nine to exit fifty. Um, they will pack yeah. that place. Now the teams that will be joining oh. them. Danville will bring a good crowd, uh, and I'm, I'm and Bossy. Unfortunately, probably not so much for Bossy, but Bossy is a good team that doesn't have a great record because they they were missing some kids at times this year. They always play a primarily four A schedule down in the Evansville area. They go play in some statewide events, so don't sleep on Bossy uh, just because of the fact that uh, they're fifteen and ten. Um, but and Garen has that that returning experience. They were runners up, nearly won 3A last year and returned most of their pieces. But Scottsburg was dominant against Batesville on Saturday in that same gymnasium. If they can do it again, they might just make their way to Indianapolis for the first time on the boys' side of the ledger. Certainly looking forward to all the action and uh, make sure you go and get yourself. If you're not, can't go yourself, you can't be in person. Listen to Greg Greg Straw on the call and uh, get that package from the Indiana I IHSAA.com. Brother, I appreciate you as always. Thanks, Jim. Talk to you next week. Well, I'll see you, Sal. See you this weekend. Looking forward to it. We've got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Speed Radio. The voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher, will join us next as Indiana coming off of a season-ending win over Michigan State that places them as the number six seed in the upcoming Big Ten Tournament. That and lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Brought to you by Freethink Indiana Sports Beat Radio for apparel and promotions. Your go-to spot for professionally printed sportswear, team apparel, fan gear, scientists, promotional products, and more. Whether you need two dozen t-shirts for your upcoming reunion or 200 for this season's recreational softball league, Freethink Apparel meets your printing needs. Their team of industry experts will work with you to design a professional-looking sales-generating web store for your custom-designed apparel for large corporations and high school sports teams to national accounts and pro-led athletic camps. Freethink Apparel delivers. Visit freethinkapparel.com today and get printing. 
Up next, Don Fisher joins us back right after this message. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the mar- Good morning, Don. Good day, sir. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing well. <clears throat> Your job has been a lot more fun the past few weeks. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been the most fun part of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely gotten a little bit better here at the end. and Man, we needed it in the worst way. Four in a row. That's good. Yep. That's especially in Have the Have they league. won four in a row other than, not, I mean, I guess maybe not in, non-conference play? Not yeah. in the Big Ten. Not yeah. more than. They did. They won four in a row, but it was yeah. not in Big Ten It was Ten back play. in December or something. Yeah, that makes Louis, sense. Louisville, Harvard, Maryland, and Michigan. That, gotcha. that four-game win streak was the only other one like that that they had this year. So they can have their longest winning streak of the year if they win at least a game in the Big Ten. Which That's correct. And they're going to have a trouble doing that because Penn State, who I think will probably come out of the Michigan matchup on the first night, will be the opponent who has beaten Indiana twice. And then if they win, Nebraska, same story. Yep. Yep. So um, the truth of the matter is Indiana couldn't probably ask for a better route. To I agree uh, with you there. I agree with you. Tournament. They could actually get on a run here if they – Hopefully, uh, I think that a big key to that will be with Trey Galloway is okay. Yep. And, and here's the other problem with Indiana: they have not when they have back-to-back ball games. Let me see what that is. Hello. I'm gonna mute him real quick. Got about 60 seconds. All right, me got to mute you. All right. I had you muted there, Don, so nothing went over whatever you might have just been talking about. Not a problem. Not a problem. Somebody wanting a donation. <laughs> well, let me call you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I tell you what, I get more crap in the mail. You can't give to any organization these days. They sell your information, and the next thing you know, you got 50 different organizations calling you, trying to get money or sending you. Cra- I get so much crap in the mail. It's unbelievable. Yep. All right, here we go, guys. Ten <laughs> house-made products around and everything you need to make a gourmet meal at home. Or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Monday, March 11th. Thanks a lot for being with us. As always, joined now by the voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher. And Don, a uh, big day for Indiana yesterday is, for a lot of reasons, first and more than most importantly, they get a very important win over Michigan State. And after all of the um, dice laid out or whatever you want to call it, everything, the chips fell where they may, Indiana ends up with a six seed in the Big Ten tournament, which is about as well as they could have, if, they, if things could have been expected to go for Indiana at this point. But not bad. Uh, after a week and a half ago, maybe, we were looking at Indiana fighting their way out of the bottom four. <laughs> uh, so a big, big change. And then a lot of things come out of yesterday. Trey Galloway, Anthony Leo uh, announced that they're coming back. So a lot to get to. Well, without question, um, the, the fact that Indiana was able to win the last four ball games of the season to go into the big 10 tournament where they have always seemed to struggle for the most part, uh, since that tournament came into to being back in the nineties. Um, there's little question that Indiana winning, 
yesterday was huge. And uh, to beat Michigan State, who's a team that uh, always gives everybody trouble, and and to pick up a, a fourth straight victory in that regard, and then to become the sixth seed uh, because of everything falling into place with all the other teams that needed to lose a ball game or or the other teams that needed to win, uh, they they find themselves in the number six spot, which is really really cool and. Without question, they've got a route right now to the Big Ten championship game. They really actually have that route if they can play some of their best basketball here in the tournament. Yeah, uh, Trey Galloway was very limited yesterday. Matter of fact, just played seven minutes. And you could see the effect of not having him in there. there the, the, the flow wasn't quite the same, but Indiana was eight, managed to get through that uh, with Xavier Johnson and Gabe Cups. Uh, and a, a great start, a great start to that game. And Mackenzie Mbako, Malik Renew, both having uh, good first halves, 10 points to end that half. They kind of disappeared in the second half, but part of that was because Khalil Ware just took over. Well, Khalil Ware was spectacular yesterday. Um, and he continues to be. I, I think he, as the season has progressed, we've seen him play harder. We've seen him provide uh, double doubles on a consistent basis. He's had 14 double doubles. I think three of the last four ball games, he's had a double double. Um, he is just playing terrific basketball right now. I, I would not be surprised to see him be an all big 10 player this year. I think he could very possibly, I think right now you'd have to, you could argue that he's one of the top five players in this league, the way he's playing. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 I mean, he's just playing that well. And um, I, I'm, I'm proud of him for what he's been able to accomplish because of the tags that he had on him coming from Oregon and, and supposedly not being a motivated guy, or uh, I don't know if they said he wasn't coachable, but uh, he certainly didn't have the big motor that everybody was anticipating that he would have at Oregon, but he comes to Indiana, this coaching staff, you got to give them credit Mike Woodson and his staff for getting this guy to play hard. He plays hard every time he goes out on the floor now. Um, and he is providing uh, what Indiana has needed for some time now is a dominant big man inside. And without question, uh, he is really uh, keying this ball club at this point. There's no uh, other way to say it, and especially with the second half that he had. Free throw at the free throw line. He he scared. Uh, I think he scared a lot of people yesterday. He goes oh for his first five and hits the one and only shot that uh, was was needed as India. That, that was the the winning point yeah. for Indiana in that game. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that before that last free throw, boy, there was a lot of people holding their breath. Well, there's no question. I mean, because he had missed his five, first five shots at the line yesterday. That was the only thing that he wasn't accomplishing in the ball game, because everything else that he did was excellent. Uh, he had a couple of blocks in the contest too, uh, but uh, you know everybody was holding their breath uh, when he shot that last free throw, and he did make it. It went down, um, and then of course uh, Michigan State. I. I, I think the play of the game, however, was what Anthony Leal did coming over to help on uh, Tyson Walker, who drove the ball down, got a shot off uh, at the end, but he got off a, a shot that was rushed a little bit or maybe not rushed so much as he got off balance because he never got in position because of the help that Anthony Leal come, came over and uh, was able to help Xavier Johnson and guarding Tyson Walker in that last play of the ball game for Michigan State, which ended up in a rebound for Xavier Johnson. And then, of course, he uh, ran the ball down the floor, dribbled the ball down the floor all the way to the other end as time ran out. So it, it was a wonderful win for this Indiana basketball team who really needed that positive, that momentum going into the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, I don't think I've seen uh, Xavier or anybody run that fast with a basketball before when he grabbed that last rebound. <laughs> he took off to the other end to uh, run out the last second or so in the game uh, for and secure that win for Indiana, which is huge. Like I said, now they go on to the Big Ten tournament, and not only do they get a six seed done, they don't, they're not in the uh, in the avenue of having to play Illinois or Purdue. 
No, they do not, and that that's really good news. Um, they, they what they have to if they're going to meet one of those two teams, it's going to have to be in the championship game of the Big Ten tournament. Uh, they actually play Penn State or Michigan in the first game on Thursday. Uh, my gut is it'll be Penn State because Michigan has really struggled. They have I can't remember the last time they got a win to be quite honest about it. But uh, Penn State has beaten Indiana twice this year. Uh, and Indiana needs to get them back, uh, give them back one because there's no doubt. Uh, I think Indiana is a better team than Penn State is, but they've gotten beat boy, twice once pretty uh, the home game uh, pretty dramatically. I think 14 points or something like that. And they lost by nine to them when they played them at Penn State. Um, and they've kind of had Indiana's number this year, despite the fact that they're a team that's playing in the first day of the tournament. I think what have eleven? Do they have uh, what, what? What's I can't even remember what their record is in the uh, in conference play this year. But it's not good enough to be anything but in that final or the last four teams out. So um, I, I look at it from this perspective: uh, Indiana has their destiny uh, right in front of them. They could actually make it to the title ball game because two teams that have beaten them twice, Penn State, would be the likely opponent on Thursday. And if that happens and Indiana would win that game, they would play a Nebraska team that also beat them twice this year uh, to get to the title. Unbelievable. It, it truly is because I, I honestly believe that Indiana is as good uh, as both of those teams, as you said, and, and if not better, uh, they just did not play the game that they need to play. They didn't uh, shoot the ball well enough, and they're going to have to defend the three better in uh, both of those games. You have, of course, uh, uh, oh my gosh, Tomina Tominaga, oh, who uh, goes yeah. goes off for Nebraska. They have to check him if they get to him, but of course, first they've got to control Penn State, but like I agree with you, this, this team, uh, it's it, they're they're as good or better than both of those teams. They just were not playing well enough, uh, like they are right now. And I think such a key to them playing up to their capability is the health of Trey Galloway right now. Uh, I know they won over Michigan State without him for the most part in that ball game yesterday. Um, but he did score five points in that seven minutes that he was out there, knocked down a three-point shot, which, you know, we love to see that because he struggled in that department this year. But that's about the only thing he struggled at because he has played so well, especially here at the end of the season when they needed him to be a major factor. And he has ran the offense extremely well. Uh, X has been out there. And, and you know, X is, a, is kind of the wild card. Uh, he can have a phenomenal ball game, and actually, he knocked down a three in that contest yesterday. Um, Big time three, very right. important. Oh, it was the one that gave him the lead back, right? I mean, yeah. it was huge in that context, and and without doubt, I mean, X is a as the wild card, I think. But if Craig Galloway's not available, they're going to have to have other people step up. Anthony Leo played twenty seven minutes yesterday, almost twenty eight minutes in that ball game, uh, didn't score a single point. Uh, yeah, it took uh, four shots in the ball game. Uh, that's not normal for him. He's capable of knocking down some shots, but all of a sudden, Anthony Leal becomes a factor for this ball club because his defensive play yesterday was excellent. It and was. He continues to play really good at the defensive end of the floor, um, and you know he can make shots. He's just got to start knocking them down again. And he's had a couple of ball games this year where he was able to do that. Um, and, but again, we're, we're looking to hope that Trey Galloway is available and capable of playing in this tournament because I think he's going to be needed. Yeah. Because Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal, they're not the same player. They're, they're not playing the same position. Uh, and, uh, but I will say that Anthony Leal's defense is better than Trey's. He was watching him yesterday, man. He was uh, on it like white on rice. He was just play sticking with his man. Uh, he 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 might have played as good a defense as anybody uh, on the floor yesterday for Indiana. Yeah. Uh, it was fun to watch him, but they do need that offensive output. Uh, not getting that from Gabe Cups either uh, hurts hurts the team a little bit. So they're going to have to find some offensive output. No question, and and uh, Trey Trey is one of those guys that he's not going to score big big numbers very often, but he can, 
Uh, if he gets that three point shot going, he can factor in, in that regard, but, but he does such a great job of doing uh, running what the offense needs to have run and his, his, uh, tracks to the, to the rim, uh, because he goes to the rim quite often. He tries to drive that basketball, his feeds to Khalil Ware for those alley-oop dunks. Uh, obviously those are all very, very important for this ball club, but they won without Trey yesterday for the most part. And I think that's a, a real positive and another confidence confidence builder for this basketball team. Because let's face it, throughout this season, what's been one of the real issues with this team? Sometimes they just don't make shots and the confidence level drops below the norm. And uh, all of a sudden, they're making shots. They didn't shoot at Superstar uh, yesterday, but they were 6 of 17. That's 35% from the three-point line. That's like some teams are doing. I mean, Michigan State was 32%. They hit just 8 of 25. But the three-point shot is such a critical thing these days. And you've got to have somebody that can make them and can spread the floor so that the inside guys can do what they do. Absolutely. Don, uh, let's see. What's up next for you? Just the uh, the Big Ten tournament call, right? Yep. yep. We're not doing a, a, a men's show tonight because of uh, – we decided to give the final show of the year to the ladies. Uh, uh, there's no question that they they are on the local radio station in Bloomington with a half hour show prior to some of the uh, men's shows. But uh, the ladies, with their tremendous season that they've had, obviously a disappointment in the Big Ten tournament, but nevertheless, without Mackenzie Holmes available throughout much of that ball game, uh, that's one of the reasons that they got beat. But they have had a tremendous season. Once again, Terry Moran continues to do a remarkable job with that program. Uh, and so the ladies will be a part of the show tonight. They will be the whole show tonight, I should say, <laughs> at the Chop Shop at 705 Inside IU Basketball. Women's basketball with Terry Moran uh, will be the final show of the season uh, for both men and women. Looking forward to it and look forward to Don Fisher on the call as Indiana proceeds to the Big Ten Tournament up in Minneapolis beginning uh, this. Well, IU will play this Thursday for the first time. No question. And uh, really excited about the fact that Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal will be back next year for Indiana. They both announced that they're coming back and their senior yeah, speakers yesterday. Didn't didn't cause much of a stir in Assembly Hall when they both announced that. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, it's critical for Mike Woodson. There's no doubt about that, uh, to have those two guys coming back. Now you've got two guys in your team that are definitely leaders. You know you're going to have an exodus with other players. Uh, they're going to be Anthony Walker and, and obviously Xavier Johnson are done. Uh, there could be a couple of other guys that get in the portal. Uh, uh, Khalil Ware is likely going to be in the NBA. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Uh, he's in all the mock drafts very high at this point in the sense of being the top 25 for sure. Um, so, you know, Indiana's going to have to do some real work in the portal. There's no question about that. And because uh, obviously they've lost Liam McNeely, as we all know at this point. Absolutely. Don Fisher, the voice of the Indiana Hoosiers. And make sure you follow him on the call this week as Indiana heads to Minneapolis for the Big Ten tournament. Don, thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Jim. See ya. Uh, absolutely. Don Fisher brought to you by Chop Shop Market and Table, where you can find the uh, inside. Indiana basketball show on Monday nights. Tonight, it is the women that will be out there. Uh, lots more coming up. Fight, fight. How about a fight at the SEC Women's Championship game between LSU and South Carolina? We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal announcing that they will be returning and plenty more. Dustin appear coming up as well in the next uh, segment. Back with more Indiana Sports Beat Radio right after this break. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. If you're looking for a home... Hey, no, Dustin DePere. Uh, he emailed both of us, but I guess you might have missed over it. Uh, I did miss over it. This game is very good. What I might do, though, is... um, or Actually, what I will do, I'll email Travis... And let him know he can come on a segment early if he wants, and you can just take him twice if you want to take him twice. Sure. Um, Any college basketball to talk about? So you can do nine forty. We can have this open. I've got the two. I've got Leal and Galloway, but I've also got 
Woodson's post game presser, some a uh, sound bite from that, and then I've got Xavier Johnson, a quote for him from the presser as well. So we've got plenty of sound to use if you want. Cool. I even have uh, there's uh, Tom Izzo there as well. <clears throat> All right. Do 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 do. Uh oh yeah. Do, 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 do. Golly, no coffee this morning because I have no creamer. You don't do coffee black at all? I'm about to. It's the best. It's the only way to do it, in my opinion. You're, a, you're more of a man than I am, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that victory. <laughs> Oh, I'd go down and make some now if I had the time. Obviously, I know I don't. All right. I need to get AJ Moye on, but I've got plenty of time for that. Mm -hmm. Are you going up to Minneapolis at all? No. I canceled my flight yesterday. There you go. At least you'll be able to cover it from home. Uh, I'll tell you where I will be. I will be at Newcastle. Okay. I wish I was taking a flight there. (laughs) All right, here we go. Payment free for 90 days or get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridge line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Remax Advanced Realty, Indie Home Pros team by Cheryl Sizemore. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Corbett. Hey, hey, welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. Just finished up with the voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher, as Indiana comes off of a a big win yesterday over Michigan State. They wind up as the number six seed in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. I, I they finished sixth in conference play. Uh, there's a tie with Iowa and Michigan State, but Indiana has the tiebreaker over both Iowa and Michigan State, having beaten them both. They they all three have identical records. Um, but the dif- the difference between the net standings, I, I still. It's it's hard to fathom. It's hard to get a grip and understand why. I remember last week we were talking about this. Um, Michigan State was 22nd in the net. Let's see where they have. Wisconsin is now 22nd in the net. Uh, Michigan State, they dropped all the way to 25th. I, I I just um, Indiana State 29th in the net yet they're not considered in the tournament. Uh, there's well, there's I, a I don't, flaw to these metrics, especially I, when you the Indi, the Indiana Michigan State comparison. I mean that the is, net. Uh, that is an the anomaly. Net, yeah, the net is just it's like what and plus what, how what much of doing? that for Michigan State is based on where they were projected at the very beginning of the season. Because Michigan State was a top four team. And they've turned out to be 
I mean, definitely a very, not a very team. mediocre team. So in Michigan State, are, are they projected? I may have missed you saying this. Are they projected in the NCAA tournament still? You know what? Um, I think so. Because if they are, then they are simply in based on preseason hype, if that's the case, because they have shown nothing, especially as of late, that is deserving of them being in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you have a couple marquee non-conference victories, but here's one thing that I think these metrics need to include, and I don't know really how you would quantify this, but you need to be able to somehow have a portion of it be how a team has played or is playing lately, if that makes sense. Again, I don't know how to quantify that or put that into a statistic. Well, see, they got away from that. They used to do that, but then they decided that, no, we're going to treat everything the same from November That's horrible 1st because this is, this is where this is where basketball matters the most. And that's why, I mean, yeah, you don't, you don't want that to be the entire way you base things off of, but that's crazy to me that they don't even want to include that because if you're doing, if you're comparing Indiana and Michigan State alone, first of all, you have a head to head. And yes, it was by a point, but if the net ranking being that big of a difference blows my mind. Yeah, I'm trying to find the, uh, the bubble teams right now, the last four buys are Colorado State, Seton Hall, TCU, and Mississippi State. This is according to Joe Lenardi, of course. Um, the last four in Indiana State, in this order, Virginia, Colorado, and St. John's. That means St. John's is the last team in at the moment. It, it goes in that exact order. Uh, and... Lenardi has Indiana State playing the play-in game along with the not playing St. John's. St. John's playing Virginia, uh, but it has Indiana State playing Colorado in a play-in game uh, right now. So Real quick, I'm looking at Jerry season. Palm's bracketology. He's got Michigan, and this is as of this morning, he's got Michigan State as a nine seed. As does in, Lenardi. As does comfortably Lenardi. Comfortably in the NCAA tournament. That is, <laughs> I cannot believe that. Wow. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's just, it's probably just because Indiana looks so ugly. When they when they lost to UConn and they, when they lost to Auburn, it was ugly. And it, uh, it was by, by a lot as well. And then early on, in the early se- pre or not preseason, but the non conference games, Indiana were really beating teams you should have killed by one, by six. Um, and that hurt Indiana. But at the end of the day, I agree with you. It's what are you doing now? How it, college basketball is about March, it's not about November. Um, And here's the thing, you can take those games into consideration, obviously, but there needs to be kind of a weighted system to where the games later in the year count more, whereas your November-December matchups, especially in the non-conference, yeah, they can count for something, but they don't need to all be on the same playing field because almost every team is far away from being a well-oiled machine at that point in the season. Let's see what Michigan State's schedule has been like. Um I know that they've played some good teams along the way, so I don't want to take that anything away from them. But if you go back to the beginning of the season, uh, see, that was last year, NCAA tournament. That, that uh, Got to get back up. to. Uh, that is the beginning of the season. My bad. Uh, they played Butler. They beat Butler very by 20. Uh, they lost. To Duke. Let's see. I believe James their Madison. big marquee win. They lost to James Madison. Game. That was their opening game of the season, correct? Yes. They lost to Madison. Kansas State. They lost to James Madison. Um, they beat Marquette. That's a uh, a, a marquee That's a good win. win. Marquette and they Baylor beat- were their two marquee victories. Now USC at the time was number ten. And this was a number seven versus 10 matchup. Well, that's not where either of these teams are now. Uh, So I don't know how much credit they're getting for that. 
But beating Marquette, there's a marquee win. Indiana does not have a marquee win. It's true. It, it, and that's the and one that's, thing that's really I – mean, it's not the one thing, but it's one of the main things that's kept Indiana out of the conversation for the NCAA tournament. Obviously, we mentioned the other stuff with the poor – Poor wins, I guess if that makes sense. The the non-convincing wins over easier non-conference opponents and then getting blown out by the big dogs. I mean, they, they didn't beat help. Butler, us. like I said, by 20. Uh Butler was a decent, turned out to be a decent team as well. They were making a run for the tournament, did not quite get there. Michigan State losing to Arizona uh in the non-conference portion of the season. Um, and then they opened up Big Ten play with two losses to Wisconsin and to Nebraska. Then, oh, here's another marquee win, though. They then beat number 11, Baylor. So they've got two marquee wins. Um, so that 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 slots them two spots above Indiana, but a nine seed? Come on. That is, and Indiana is, is zip. Um, yeah, looking down through the Big Ten, they they lost to Illinois, beat the crap out of Penn State. It's um, yeah, Indiana's games have just been too close. Their wins have been close. The, the, the losses, they they honestly they beat up on the lower end of the Big Ten, um, as well. If you want to look at it from that standpoint, You're talking about Indiana, uh, Indiana actually. I mean, I guess you got swept by one of the lower teams, Penn State. And then Nebraska, I mean, a lot, I know we kind of consider them lower tier, but, I mean, they're the number three seed in the Big Ten tournament. Even though yeah, they- Indiana did not have a win over the, the first four placing teams of the Big Ten. So that's what? They- Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska, who's four? Northwestern. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you didn't beat any of those four. But they also were swept by Penn State. And um, lost your only game to Rutgers. Yep. And, you can almost uh, eliminate those three losses alone, and you may be – oh, you wouldn't you know, be safely no, in the tournament. You would safely be in the tournament because Indiana would then be 21 be and whatever. Nine. That's true. That'd be enough. You'd probably be a 10 seed-ish. But, yeah, that's, that's crazy how – if you can avoid those slip-ups – but that's always the case, and that's the problem. It's just this much, and you have to be on point. You, you cannot have the, the lulls that Indiana had. Um, and for the reason that they had them, let's be honest, this team is not being organized like it was at the start of the season. What happened to that second unit? It just magically disappeared. Did you notice that? Remember all the talk of this second unit? Oh, well, that's the but I'm not going to talk to you how I sub. That's called an but adjustment. Mag- I guess he finally uh, but, realized but magically what, it, what the issue was. Yeah. Like you think? Did, but he had to do you something. You think? Uh, so changes that were just uh, pounded that, that weren't going to happen finally happened. And, and look what happens with – the team that's the that's the point the changes that were made came too late but and the changes were made over stubbornness over thinking that that the wrong way was the right way well it wasn't and everybody in the world knew that except for one person unfortunately for indiana and that cost, let's just be honest, that cost them. They, they can, or Mike can put all the excuses he wants on Xavier and all that crap. It's not. It's it's not. It's it's not doing things that they should have done when they had him. They should have won those games earlier by much more comfortable margins. They, they, they just, they should not have been swept by Penn State. They should not have been swept by Nebraska but they did because of how things were being run. And that's just all there is to it. Um, And that's that. Uh, 
we got plenty more to talk about in that regard. Uh, but we've also got a lot of sound from yesterday. None more important, probably, than these two guys that uh, stepped to the microphone, which I'm a little confused, John. I'm going to be honest with you. Both Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal during senior day festivities announced that they both will be returning. Correct. But yet you go through senior day festivities anyway, uh, which you're a senior, I guess. So I, I guess that part makes sense. But you don't surely that you don't go through that again next year, right? I think again, we're, this will be the final year next year of of the COVID seniors, if you will. So right, but I'm saying you don't go through senior day again. It would. Right? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they do, just because. I mean, I mean, they'll have different things to say. They'll be reflecting on their career and whether or not you think they yeah. should or not. I mean, that's that's totally up to them, and I'm sure they'll be given the I opportunity next year I if they want stupid. to. Stupid. I think that that's dumber than because really this was a, more so just a platform for them to announce of their return than their reflection on their career. Yeah, but they went through the whole senior day festivities like everybody else. Yeah, and again, it's. It's it's however you want to view that as it doesn't bother me. I, I really don't care. But um, let's let's go ahead and we'll we'll, we'll cut to both of their an- announcements from their senior day festivities. First up, Anthony Leal. It's it's really been hard, but the main thing that's gonna keep me going is knowing that you know I don't really have to do this speech until next year. Yeah. That was yeah, it's little- Leal. I know the audio is hard. Let, let me yeah. just tell you, there's no way to record inside uh, of assembly <laughs> hall like that. First of all, uh, as you know, the sound there is not as crazy because of how it is. And it's a and, big echo chamber. Well, absolutely. And then you could hear right there when, when the crowd goes wild, you hear that more than anything. Yes. Uh, and this was done from down on the court. You're right in front uh, of the the micro of the where they were doing these speeches. Uh, Twenty feet away from the players, uh, you're right there, and but yet, so the sound's not going to be great on this. So let me preface it by telling you that. Yeah, here, here's Trey Galloway making his announcement. I don't know why it's time for me. To- <laughs> Again, yeah, it's you get the gist of what happened, but yeah, with the microphone and the echo, it it is what it is. And you can find those if you want to watch those in uh, in full. You can find those uh, at uh, on our YouTube channel. But right. you might be able to find it in a little bit better format with with Indiana. When we come back, lots more to talk about. Uh, got a great chance to see Xavier Johnson and his family last night as they came out to Hoosier Hanks East for uh, post game festivities and uh, enjoyed a great meal. Uh, Mike with his dad, Mike. Uh, and the entire family uh, saw the Hulls family last night, saw A.J. Moye this weekend, plenty to talk about, uh, and plot of sound, and the SEC championship fight, baby. Lots of that and more. After this break, brought to you by our good friend Cheryl Sizemore. For those in the market for a home in Indianapolis area, you need Cheryl and her two decades of experience. Could be the difference. Between getting the home you want or not, reach out to her, Cheryl at IndieHomePros.com. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market. All right. How wild would it be if this is the year of all years that Indiana finds a way to win the Big Ten tournament? I'm not betting on it, but that would be quite the uh, storyline, if you will. (laughs) 
decided not to go. Yeah. I would be happy that I decided not to go because that's a hell of a lot of money I saved and I can use for the NCAA tournament. I am curious what kind of seed they would get if they, because at that point you would have won. You will have won eight straight games if yeah, you go and win this not, Big Ten tournament. They would not get a play in. I can guarantee. Oh, they wouldn't be a play. They'd probably. I think they'd probably be where Michigan State is right now. They'd probably get in the eight nine, which that's not the most ideal. But again, you've you've kind of shut. You've already. You're not going to get a favorable seat if you make it. Period. Right now, so. Be something, that's for sure. All right, 30 seconds. I don't know if Travis will join us this segment, but if not, he'll be here next segment. Home with Property Shore Construction. Now building exclusively south of Bloomington within the Stonecrest Golf Community. Choose from one of the gorgeous Stonecrest Signature Series house plans. We have several lots available with scenic views of the golf course. Contact Amy Rhoda with Rebesco Real Estate for additional information. 812-583-0919 or go to mystonecrestliving.com. That's mystonecrestliving.com for more details. This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Corden, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Monday. Thanks a lot for being with us. We've already had Greg Rakestraw and Don Fisher on. Travis Miller from Boiler Upload will be joining us at uh, some point. Dustin. Not able to join us this week as he's traveling, I believe. So much going on this weekend. Of course, Indiana uh, winning to uh, get themselves a sixth seed yesterday in a, uh, a game that looked like it was going to be a runaway. Indiana opened up and, man, they took off. They were hitting shots. And they got out to as much as a 16-point lead. But as the uh, first half started winding down, they let Sparty go on an 8-0 run. And then to start the second half, they continued that. And at one point, I think I I uh, calculated a 20-2 run that, Indiana, that uh, Sparty had w- went on. And had two seven-point leads, but Indiana fought back without Trey Galloway and um, managed to get the win. Showed uh, that showed a lot. Kalel Ware, who he had nine points in the first half. Indiana almost had three players in double figures in the first half with McKenzie and with uh, Malik Renu and McKenzie and Baco both with with the uh, ten apiece. And then the second half, though. Those two didn't score. They had five points with like seven minutes to go in the game. In the game. I, I was looking down through there. It was all Kalel Ware doing all of the damage, uh, except at the free throw line, which turned into a scary, scary thing. But he hit the one out of six that he needed to hit. That was the proved to be the winner for Indiana. And so now they head into the Big Ten tournament as a six seed. And uh, they'll play most likely Penn State, a team that they've lost to twice so far. You know what they say, hard to beat a team three times in the season. And uh, I think that Penn State will be encountering a different Indiana team if they can get 
Trey Galloway back, but Indiana is also going to have to make sure they can limit the three-point game of the Nittany Lions. But that'll be coming up this Thursday. We shall see. Um, Mike Woodson spoke to the media yesterday. John, were there any players that spoke to the media I was Xavier Johnson and Kalel Ware. I do have a quote from Xavier Johnson talking about yesterday's game with us. Not from Kalel definitely. Ware. Let's hear from X. Saw him last night. Uh, him and his family, my his dad Mike Johnson, and the entire family uh, were out at uh, Hoosier Hanks East afterwards for uh, a post game celebration. Glad just I've got some cake downstairs that I can't wait to have a bite of. Um, looking forward to that. But let's hear what Xavier had to say. You know, I was just focused on, you know, in the first half, you know, I think I was trying to do too much in the second half. Uh, you know, I tried to control the, control the game a little bit more, a little bit more better. Uh, I think, we, you know, we, we went to the bigs a lot uh, at, the, at the end because, yeah, you know, there are, are big pieces to the team. And, you know, they made plays they made, and they made the right plays. And that, and that you know, is a result winning. He hit the nail on the head, went to the bigs. They were the big part of the game yesterday for Indiana. And uh, but they get it done. Kalel Ware, he did. He had a spectacular day. Um, he he was unstoppable for Michigan State. And his game, you want to talk? You want to think that he's not gone in the first round of the NBA? I'll guarantee it right now. He is just working his way up the draft boards, which at each performance, he's looking more and more polished. He's looking more and more confident. Um, and, and, and he's looking more and more efficient. That's a, that's a great combination of, uh, three important qualities right there. So congratulations to, uh, him and, and all of the, uh, team Travis Miller from boiler upload. Yana, you're going to pull it. There you go. Got his Purdue hat on. Look at him. Big 10 champs. Supporting the brand. He's riding for the brand today, baby. And um, I got home field apparel as well. Uh, there you go. Uh, big weekend for uh, for the Big Ten. Things get settled finally now. Uh, Indiana gets a six seed, man. That's got to be a big surprise to a lot of people. Well, I know we talked about it last week, but you put Michigan State's profile next to Indiana's. And they're almost exactly the same. So I think I do agree with you. It's pretty stark the difference that they have on the net ratings there where they're still in the top 30, which is stunning to me. And then you have Indiana at what is it? 97th, 96, something like that. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's they're not even in the same universe. And, and if you look at it, even the strength of schedule is not that far off. So I'm, I'm not getting where this is coming from. I mean, they are both three and eight against tier one teams. Both are 10 and 10 in the Big Ten. They are 18 and 13 overall. They are five and five in their last 10. I mean, these are identically the same profiles. And Indiana now has the head to head win. Um, you know, I and Michigan State is a nine seed in the NCAA tournament. I, I don't get it. I if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't think Michigan State is a tournament team. And the one that I wish they had dropped now was when they played Indiana State back in December. They beat Indiana State by 12. And that was at Michigan State. Put them on a neutral floor or put them in Terre Haute. You might have a different result. You might have a different result today. But I think it's absurd that you think Michigan State is a lock for the NCAA tournament, but Indiana State is on the bubble. I'm like, seriously? Are you kidding exactly. me? It, well, are, there's are another you... win, another win that North, that uh, Michigan State has that looked so glorious back then at the time was against UC uh, USC. Um, USC, they're not, are they? They're are they still ranked? USC? I don't even think they're no. Uh, no, they didn't, I didn't play think USC. so. Uh, they well, lost to Arizona. They lost to Duke. Uh, they have a decent win over Butler uh, at a conference. It's Baylor was their biggest non-conference win. Yes. 
Which was ba- also, did they not beat Marquette this year? Uh, they didn't play Marquette. Okay, I must have went too far back on the schedule when I was looking. But yeah, um, I'm I'm going to bring up the profiles next to each other because I'm on the, yeah. the great and Nolan site is fantastic for comparing profiles and whatnot. I, I love this site. But even when you look at non-conference strength of schedule, Indiana's is 77th. Uh, Michigan State is 14th. Uh, you go to net uh, strength of schedule, Michigan State 18th, Indiana 22nd. So you're looking at even their overall strength of schedule is close. It's based on that non-conference schedule. And because Michigan State scheduled the likes of Arizona and Duke and Baylor and all them, they're getting a tremendous amount of uh, benefit of the doubt. And I, okay. So you get, you, you give them a slight non-conference schedule boost, but 70 spots. Really? Yeah, that's, that's, but that shows the unbelievable failing of the net. It's like, what, what are you, there is something that is being, there is a big, big flaw in the net that is allowing it to be skewed in some unbelievable manner because I, I can see Michigan State being a little bit in front of Indiana, but not that, not that. That's that's crazy, and that's something they have to to uh, look at because for for other teams, because I'm sure there are other teams that are that are being affected this way as well. And and there's something in Ken Palm too because Ken Palm has a 19th, and it has Indiana 86th. The metrics just don't like the Hoosiers. And apparently the metrics love Michigan State. I, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I think I think Michigan State is one of the most disappointing teams in the country. Uh, I think they're right up there with Miami and USC. I say USC because any team that has that much talent in terms of raw stars, there is no valid excuse for them to be that bad. Um, but... You know, Michigan State was touted as a Final Four team coming into the year, and they are somehow still getting that benefit of the doubt. And the whole, well, it's Izzo; he can make a run to March. Has anybody watched this team, especially of late? They are five and five in their last ten games. Uh, they did get a they did get a pretty nice win over Northwestern last week, but they lost at Indiana. Or they lost at Purdue. They have a home loss to Ohio State, who is another team that is just really coming on and may be able to surprise and get into that at-large discussion with a decent run in Minneapolis. I mean, would would you put Ohio State as a better team with a better resume right now than Michigan State? Yes, because of uh, who they beat later in the season. Yes, per, uh, Michigan or Ohio State, excuse me, is three and six against the top, uh, the top tier, of the net, but they've won five of their last six games under an interim coach. Yes, they, they, they've had a, a tremendous turnaround. And another thing, though, I, I think that the net and some of these, it's now become every game is the same, whether it's November fourteenth or March first, and that's not the same to me. These teams are not the same. They're 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 better and they're worse, uh, but they're not being judged that way. I think. Yeah, and, and I agree. I mean, I'm I'm looking at Indiana's profile here. Their best wins are over number 22 Wisconsin, number 25 Michigan State, and number 54 Ohio State. Okay, um, how do you how do you judge that Ohio State win now? It's a three point win. It was when they were under their previous coach, but they still went into a place where the arguable number one team in the nation, Purdue, did not win. So, you know, I got to give Indiana some credit there. And, you know, none of the losses are horrific. I mean, maybe the Penn State home game, but, I mean, Penn State still finished 9-11 and in the Big Ten. So you're looking at a team that was kind of on par with the Hoosiers and whatnot. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just – I. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. I am not saying that Indiana is 100% guaranteed an NCAA tournament team. However, I think they deserve a little bit more consideration, and I think that there are teams out there that deserve less consideration, like Michigan State. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. The not getting that win over Kansas, uh, I, I remember we all said it then, and it, that that's going to come back to haunt Indiana because it was kind of their uh, last non-con shot at a quote-unquote marquee win, uh, and they were close but could not get that done. Uh, they were close to, to Illinois on the road, could not get that done. Of course, both Purdue games, neither were close. Um, there weren't a lot of opportunities for marquee wins in the Big Ten this year. Yeah, and I think another thing Indiana might be getting punished for is they won all of their bye games, if you will, in the uh, non-conference, but they didn't win them convincingly. You have, uh, I know they struggled with Army, they struggled with uh, Florida Gulf Coast, they struck well, that Louisville wasn't a bye game, that they struggled a little bit with Louisville. Um, there's a small, you know, boost in the win over Moorhead State now that Moorhead beat, State is officially an NCAA tournament team. Uh, well, they beat them by one, but they beat them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think that it's almost like that that's punishing Indiana, whereas Michigan State is still getting rewarded for starting the season as a top five team. And at some point you have to – you, you kind of have to divorce yourself from the straight metrics and those preseason expectations and look at what's actually happened on the court. And I don't think there's a huge difference between Michigan State and Indiana. And, well, yesterday we saw the teams head-to-head. -head. Indiana beat them. Okay. <laughs> I say you have to eliminate these stupid preseason rankings. Uh, they're always so skewed. Hey, we got lots more to talk about here on Indiana Sports. Sports Beat Radio. Travis Miller is with us from Boiler Upload. We'll be back with plenty of that and more. Brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East, located over off of College Mall Road, where uh, you've been missing out on the uh, post game shows with uh, Todd Leary. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Formerly. Yeah, I saw a good game on Saturday. I went over to the uh, Kokomo Fishers game at Newcastle. Oh, I bet it was. Oh, that was a tremendous atmosphere. I took my son with me, and I was like, I was like, you know, this is this is what the NC, what the uh, high school tournament's supposed to be in this state. This is what I grew up with. <laughs> yeah, I was at, uh, and I was lucky enough to be down at Southridge. Ah, I heard that was a good one too. Oh, it was a hell of a game. It went right down to the end. Uh, watching Jeffersonville and Evansville Harrison, you know, the Sean Wilkerson played at IU and Pat Graham is on the Harrison staff. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, uh, saw AJ Moye there as well for a, now an assistant coach of Valpo. He's watched some one of the Jeff players, but I, I guess I'm going to have to make the trip to Newcastle this weekend now. Yeah. F Fishers is legit. They are, they are a solid oh. team. I can't without Jalen Harrelson. They, yeah, if they if he had stayed, I can't imagine how good they would be. If he had stayed, I'm not gonna say that they could. I'd like to see them play a team like Montverde. It would it'd be interesting. I I, I know I, they only lost one game all year, but they really took it to Kokomo, and what what happened is they jumped on him early. I mean, we can we can discuss this too in, in the, during the after the break here. But it, Kokomo was a very good team playing some really good basketball at the end of the year, and Fishers just took him. I mean, just took him to task. Well, the, Alan, the cash man, he's up in arms about the uh, the auto bids going, not going to the to the uh, to the regular, regular season, season conference season, and I agree with that. I agree too, but then that also eliminates the point of the tournaments altogether. Really, well, you, the only reason the tournaments are there are, are to generate money. That's the only reason the tournaments came about. But then, but if you eliminate the need for or the, the ability to make the tournament off of that, then there's no purpose to try if you're the team. But why why have a regular season 
if you're going to have a 20 season where you're grinding your ass off. I agree. You almost group. have to, you almost have to give auto bids to both, <laughs> you know? Well, I, I think that that should be the case for certain leagues at go. least. Yeah. Here we go. Six months on a 2023 Honda Ridge line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back in Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Monday after a big weekend of sports, all kinds of things going on. Uh, the regular season of men's basketball wrapping up as we will head into the Big Ten tournament and other tournaments, the other tournaments this week as well, uh, getting started. Uh, or any of them start tomorrow? I can't um, remember. I think, I think maybe the ACC starts tomorrow with some of those early round games uh, in terms of the big conferences. Uh, but, I mean, you get the joy of those uh, automatic bid uh, one, one-off one leagues that start tonight. Uh, like uh, the Southern Conference, and uh, I think tonight you have the Horizon League, maybe, and uh, just so, some of those are really fun just to see what's at stake. I mean, did you did you catch the end of the uh, Stetson game yesterday? No, but uh, is Jalen Blackman? Yes, he, he went off. Oh, 43, was it 43 points? Uh, 43 points, and they survive a last-minute missed buzzer beater at home to uh, to clinch their first ever NCAA tournament bid. Uh, that that's just the stuff that you look for. I mean, that's that's what makes this sport so great. Is well, I'm glad you brought nation. up Jalen Blackman because don't be surprised, Indiana fans, if you do not hear his name being battered about the brother of James Blackman. Uh, of course, the son of his father was a great college player as well. But James Blackman, the former Indiana player, uh, Jalen was just too small when he came out of high school, I think, uh, to, to get that big time offer. Uh, it goes to Stetson. He's a big boy now. You pump in 43, baby. I don't care what's going on. That's uh, That's some shooting. That, that, that's some Harold the Show Arsenal uh, potential in round one. And I know you know that reference. Yeah. One of, the, one of the best nicknames you will ever have coming out of the NCAA tournament, Harold the Show Arsenal. The show. That is it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking so forward to, first of all, the Big Ten tournament getting started. Uh, all we, we're always going to have upsets. Who who is your pick for the the big who's who's susceptible to to getting upset early in this Big Ten tournament? Ah, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, I mean, Illinois seems to have righted the ship with the the win yesterday at Iowa, but I I think that with their defense and the way that they have struggled to close some of these games, I, I think things could get a little bit dicey for them and. If they have a Friday night game against Ohio State, a team that is playing some of its best basketball of the season, if not some of the best basketball in the entire conference, with a chance to climb onto the bubble with a run to the semifinals, I think that could be a really, really interesting game on uh, on Friday night, the late, late game, if you will. Uh, and then... Looking elsewhere, I mean, Northwestern and Nebraska, there's just not a lot of history there with either one having a ton of success in the Big Ten tournament, but they do have those double buys. That's going to help them get pretty far. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how Nebraska does away from home. I know they went undefeated at home through the Big Ten this season, but they kind of struggled away from home. And of late, they have done better, but their closing stretch was not exactly that strong. They beat Michigan, Penn State, Indiana, Minnesota, Rutgers, and Michigan again. Uh, they have not played a t- <laughs> they have not played an NCAA tournament caliber team really since Northwestern on February seventh, and they lost that game. So I think they're still in the field, but uh, you know it, it's really kind of a who have they played, and if they get a good team on a neutral floor, you don't know what's going to happen quite yet with them. 
Yeah, looking at the uh, the layout uh, on the top side, Rutgers and Maryland will kick things off, and then Michigan and Penn State. Uh, Rutgers uh, is a tough team. Maryland, a team that was thought to be much, much better. Uh, those two teams winding up in the bottom is, is kind of uh, surprising. But uh, that is not a – that's – that's going to be a tough game. Uh, Rutgers, Rutgers playing the hard nosed defense. Rutgers versus Maryland on a late Wednesday afternoon in Minneapolis. In a, I mean, that's just going to set attendance records. Uh, I'm kind of <laughs> glad that that's. I, I, I'm kind of glad that that's buried on Peacock. That's got really strong. We're contractually obligated to broadcast this game. Energy. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then the winner of that game will go in to take on Wisconsin. Uh, so there's another, I don't know. Um, I don't want to not excited. I don't want to put down the big 10 games, but, uh, so you got that going for you, which is nice. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, the second round will have Minnesota uh, playing Michigan state. Uh, the Rutgers Maryland winner taking on Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Iowa. That'll be a good game. That, that's I, kind I, of an I'm elimination thinking, game. I, I think I'm taking Ohio State just because of the run that they've been on. And how about the run under the interim coach? Um, it's kind of amazing, to be honest with you. I mean, this, this was a team that was dead in the water. I mean, they they have a loss to Michigan on their resume. <laughs> and uh, M- Michigan's been mentally checked out of the season for about two and a half months. So, uh, but you're right. They, they have come on. And even when you look at their schedule, they've got a lot of really narrow losses. Uh, they lost by three to Indiana. They lost by two to Iowa. They lost um, uh, by six to Indiana. This, this is a team that hasn't been far off, a three-point loss to Penn State. So even before they uh, they fired Chris Holtman, they they were at least competitive. And, you know, the, you could argue that those losses are the reason Chris Holtman's not there. But for whatever reason, it's working under an interim coach. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think they've got a shot if they beat Iowa and then they can pull an upset over Illinois. You're looking at a team that's going to be 21 and 12 going into the Big Ten tournament semifinals with four or five quadrant one wins. I mean, there's worse teams that have made the field, honestly. <laughs> uh, not only that, not only would they probably be deserving to be in, and I don't mean to turn this around, but that would be a team that Indiana had swept. Yeah. Uh, in two games. So that really adds to the irony of Indiana. But if Ohio State can take care of business against Iowa, then they'll take on an Illinois team, which will be very, very tough. Don't get me wrong. They're playing well. But Ohio State has shown they have the capabilities of knocking off the big boys. They've done it. Uh, You beat Purdue, eh, you can beat about anybody. And so let's say they knocked off Illinois and reached the semifinal game. And Indiana was able to do the same. Uh, that would that would mean Indiana has twenty wins at that point, uh, and just b- before they would even play, though, an Ohio State Indiana game would be so appropriate for this year uh, in the in the Big Ten semifinals because Ohio State uh, at that point, I I think that they would get in for sure. They would get in. Indiana, even with 20 wins, their metrics would still be bad. It's I don't know that there's much they can do other than win the Big Ten tournament to overcome this being buried in the, the, the metrics this year. Wouldn't that be an interesting thought from the Indiana fans' perspective? Because uh, obviously I had an eye on Twitter and all the discourse over Mike Woodson this past week. But to see Indiana win three games in the Big Ten tournament, go into the final on a seven-game win streak, and say they lose it to Purdue, uh, just get you know crawling back from the dead to get right there, only to have Purdue deny them. Uh, how would well, that, that, that be the revolt? It, that of- would be so. That would be so painful for Indiana fans. It's on so many levels. 
uh boy you're it's like being stabbed from different directions there (laughs) i mean i thought this past week was a revolt i can't imagine what it would be like on your message board i i I would oh no well no if if they were able to get that far losing to purdue right now is not uh in any other world it would it would it would be catastrophic but purdue is purdue's the giant and uh, you'd have to be a giant slayer to get that job done. Uh, it, it, losing Purdue would just suck for Indiana fans just because they're losing to the team that they don't want to lose to. But you, you have to, uh, I, I think they're smart enough to give Purdue the respect that they deserve that it's not you're not playing a mid-level Purdue team or you're not playing a Purdue team that you're at the same level as because you're not. Uh, so it would take an upset for that to happen, uh, but there actually, the, the it would be ironic because with all of the uh, vitriol that has been coming, what happens if that does happen and they they stay on this win streak and they roll to the Big Ten title game? Then what do people say? Um, what what do we say? Uh, does that wipe out the – the? here's the thing. that I talked about this earlier before you joined us. Indiana is doing a lot of things now that they were not doing the last two years. Mike Woodson was insisted on this two units, this second unit thing, where he would bring four guys in uh, at like the eight-minute mark. Does it matter what the play the, – the, what's happening with the game? It doesn't matter if if uh, they're they're having a hot hand that they're riding a, a a streak at the moment. He would make the substitutions regardless. And time and time again, uh, Auburn game is a great example. They had great momentum and a lead, and gave it all back because of the substitution pattern. And refused uh, to acknowledge. He refused to acknowledge that to talk about it. Um, but yet magically that has disappeared that no longer even exists. Then, uh, it was, and the reason was, oh, I can't play these guys X number of minutes. Well, ironically, if you look, these guys are playing about those number of minutes now, and that's exactly what has happened. It took too long to get to that point. Um, unfortunately, so that's, that's this one of the deals that, but anyway, um, I, I, I don't think there's anything Indiana can do from a metric standpoint. I, I don't think the only, the, there's only one game that they can win that will matter. And that's the big 10 championship game. in in my opinion, I just don't think they can overcome the metrics th- to, from what it, it, it appears to us. Yeah. And you know, the, the top to get a top tier win, it has to be against a top 50 team. There's only six teams in the Big Ten right now that are in the top 50. Purdue, Illinois, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Northwestern is exactly at 50. So it's not the usual target-rich environment that you can get in the Big Ten tournament. And and it's it I mean, like you said, there's there's not a lot you can do, but it's not impossible to win the Big Ten tournament and and get through. Uh, I know it's only happened four times in the history of the whole thing where a team has gone won four games in four days, but three of them have been in the last six years. Uh, you had Michigan do it a couple of years ago twice, and then Iowa uh, two years ago won it uh, got, went won four games in four days. Beat Indiana on that buzzer beater, and then beat Purdue in the final. After, after, and that was after Indiana had beaten Illinois uh, and Michigan, who were both uh, very, very good teams. Indiana was on a run until cut short by that that last second shot by Iowa. Right, and so I, I know the Big Ten tournament has been kind of Indiana's kryptonite. And the other thing is, I'm shocked Purdue and Indiana have only played once in the thing. And that was the very first one in 1998. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's crazy. Uh, well, Indiana has never won it. Uh, there's another crazy faction. Uh, why? Uh, who knows? 
Bob Knight did not like the tournament to start with. And so a lot of people think that that kind of started it, but there's been too many years after that for that to be the reason. But regardless of that, it gets started on Wednesday and uh, looking forward to that. What's going on with you guys at uh, Boiler Upload? Uh, later today, we will be releasing the Rivals.com All Big Ten Teams. Uh, this is something that I started when I was still over at SB Nation, where I would contact the various Big Ten sites and get them to vote on their first, second, third team All Big Ten selections. Uh, and then I carried it over last year with my first year at Rivals. I did it, and it was a lot of fun. It's interesting to see kind of how these pan out over – you know, other teams' perspectives, who puts in a homer pick, who agrees with things. Uh, but we have a pretty comprehensive first team. And then uh, later this week, obviously, Casey will be up in Minnesota. He's going to get up there on Friday for Purdue's game at noon against the Michigan State-Minnesota winner. And uh, we're also talking college baseball. Uh, Purdue off to a good start in college baseball. They are 12-4 and four after a weekend sweep of Albany. So uh, Big Ten season's coming up in two weeks there. Uh, I know IU fans are big college baseball fans and everything. So Yeah, they've it, got a good start to the season. So that'll baseball. be fun to watch Purdue and Indiana go at it this year on the on the diamond. Yeah, I think I think they played Alexander Field uh, very late in the season, but it, that's a good series. It's one that Indiana has dominated of late. But uh, it, I really like that Purdue has kind of embraced it. They promoted it a little bit more, and – the Indiana series, when it has been in Alexander Field, has been a lot of fun, and they've set some attendance records there. Very modest <laughs> in, in the world of college baseball when you have Mississippi State getting 18,000 fans to a college baseball game on campus. But, uh, it, I mean, I just love college baseball. Weather's good. You get to go enjoy some time outside. Uh, the atmosphere is great, and – uh, yeah, they play Indiana May 3rd, 4th, and 5th in West Lafayette. Yeah, in uh, Mississippi State, coached by uh, Mr. Lamonis, Indiana's former coach. Uh, so, yeah, they, they take it very, very seriously. My daughter goes to Ole Miss. Baseball games are a big thing, man, in the Southeastern Conference. I mean big. Every game, uh, you're talking five digits of, of attendance. Uh, at, at these games, and, and they take it all very, very seriously. Yeah, this weekend I was watching uh, Miami and Virginia, which ACC is still huge. My wife was a bat girl for Miami when they won their last national title in 2001, so uh, we're big college baseball fans. That's kind of how I got into it, and the Saturday night game between Virginia and Miami was absolutely wild. Virginia was up 12-3 to going into, I think it was the seventh inning, and Miami rallied for six in the seventh and then seven in the eighth to win 16 to 12. They had a grand slam in the eighth inning. They score all seven runs with two outs to come back and win that game over Virginia, who's, I believe, ranked 12th or 13th going into it. So that that's the kind of fun you get with college baseball. No lead is safe. And it, it was a wild game, and it was fun to watch. I think they said it was the largest comeback for Miami in 30 years. Craziness. And we've got lots of craziness about to start on the hardwood as all the tournament action gets started, which I know some of it already has. But uh, the bigger the bigger conference tournaments all getting started this week, followed by, the, uh, followed by Selection Sunday, next Sunday, and... The NCAA tournament, which will start immediately following with the play-in games, uh, which I hate. Um, <laughs> I, I just, it's like, let the tournament start when it's supposed to start. Uh, but they had to cram that stuff in the middle. And I'm, I'm still, I'll be honest with you, I'm still pissed off about having to go from Dayton, Ohio to Portland, Oregon two years ago with no notice driving from Dayton straight to Indianapolis to get, get on a plane um, it, it, uh, NCAA like they can't lay that out. There's Travis Miller will die on with you on that. <laughs> um, man, I'm telling you, it drives me insane. Um, that, and I agree with uh, Alan, the cash man and that the auto bids should go to regular season conference champions. I, I, I would like to see a hybrid system where your smaller conferences awarded to the regular season champions 
Uh, but you still have the Big Ten tournament where you get the sec kind of like a second chance for an Indiana or an Ohio State where they can get hot, run through, and uh, steal a bid that way. Yeah, but I think leagues like that, you're gonna. Get, there's no way the regular season champion of the Big Ten or the Big Twelve or the ACC or the SEC is not going to get an, a, an NCAA tournament bid. So while it's not an auto bid, there's no way you're not getting a bid, in my right. opinion. You're right. I, I agree. And it just it just it's ridiculous to me that Indiana State is gonna have to wait around this week and may not make the tournament because we have to include the seventh place team in the ACC. And the the other hill that I will happily die on, and you can join me up here, I do not think that a power conference team that finishes with a losing record in their conference deserves an at-large bid. I think that should be an automatic disqualifier. Uh, I know we spent time advocating here for Ohio State, but that's more the real world of, you know, they are going to get some consideration. But no, you finish below 500 in your conference, you should not get an at-large bid. You want to complain about it, go win your conference tournament and get in that way. That's your second chance. Absolutely. Travis, appreciate you as always, brother. Look forward to doing it again soon. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Travis Miller from uh, at Boiler Upload. Make sure you're following him for uh, any content relating to Purdue or whatever you might want to look at because there's plenty of other stuff. Uh, lots more coming up. We'll talk about new offers out for uh, visitors to Indiana basketball yesterday and plenty more. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Beat Radio back with more brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville right off of I-65 Pizza, Burgers, Beer right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the market. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, brother. All right, you still got the Woody sound here if you want to use that. Just him talking about senior day and winning and why he left the seniors in, that kind of thing. I tell you what, that's it's a I listened to the comment and I was like, this is something that people would be bitching about if they lost, especially if they lost by a favorable or a significant margin. I didn't hear anything. I was Dude, I didn't see any of it. Separate? Oh, okay. Well, no, I didn't see any of it because I was in the post game presser with Tom Izzo. It was in a separate that. room. Tom Izzo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought they just put him in the same room after they were. No. Gone. No hell, this was happening while Senior Day was going on. Gotcha. Have you heard anything about, I mean, just through the grapevine about the Liam McNeely stuff, or do you have no idea still about why he decommitted? Um, no. I could just guess, but no. Yeah, 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 of course. It's weird. His recruiting class is more than likely going to be all portal guys, unless he can get some late additions. I don't know how many people are left in the class, but can't be many. He was going to need portal players regardless, but now he's going to need more <laughs> portal players. <clears throat> and one guy I should definitely go after, and I don't know if they will, is that dude from Pacific. Houston Mallet, good shooter. But who knows? Portal have plenty of options once all these other seasons end. Both right, Gage, 30 Solarski, seconds. and 
the one-stop shop for high-quality meats, bakery items, and now fresh seafood. Chop Shop Market and Table has the largest selection of in-house made products around and everything you need to make a gourmet meal at home. Or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, hey, welcome back on this Monday. Thanks so much for being with us at Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by our good friends at Reynolds Family Dentistry down in Sellersburg. For our Southern Indiana listeners, if you need that championship smile, go see our good friend Dr. J. J. Reynolds at Reynolds Family Dentistry. Uh, yesterday, Indiana had some visitors to uh, the game and to see the win that they uh, got over whoever they were playing. It slipped my mind uh, for a second there. Uh, but a uh, a great group. You had Braylon Mullins, who has already been offered. Trent Sisley, who is a top target of Indiana. But also Steve Reynolds the third and Gabe Sularski uh, recently begun recruiting by IU. Stephen Reynolds the third received his offer yesterday. Very happy to get that. The six foot five guard, twenty twenty six class out of South Bend, Washington. Very athletic and explosive guard. Um, fun to watch him play. Very athletic. Uh, so there's another offer. Indiana's out, but that's a, a a couple of years away. And then, of course, Gabe Solarski also receiving an offer. He is also in that class of 2026, a point guard at 6'6". That's a big boy for a point guard. Uh, but he plays for uh, Bennett. He's out of the Bennett Academy in Illinois, but plays for Nike Mean Street's EYBL program up in Chicago. I'm sure we'll uh, see him over the summer as well as uh, they'll cross paths with guys like Braylon Mullins and Trent Sisley, who were both playing for Indiana Elite on the AAU circuit. So lots to look forward to. Lots to look forward to still this weekend. I, I'm I'm jacked about going to – I'm not jacked about driving to Newcastle. I'm going to be honest with you, just because it's uh, – it's not that far away, I guess, two hours whatever I haven't even looked but um just the phenom- being in that environment is going to be awesome uh it is going to be just awesome and I can't wait uh the games hopefully they're great as well you got some great matchups I uh, Sharon Wilkerson I love as a coach I I, I mean it I, I think he is tremendous watching his team play man it was fun uh the movement amazing and um it's going to be interesting uh they face a tall task this weekend but uh looking forward to uh taking all of that in uh the sec championship holy cow john did you happen to see this i didn't watch the game but i did see the scuffle if that's it's probably putting it lightly of what happened during that well, it happened while the IU game w- was going on, and I-, I did not see the the uh, scuffle itself either. Um, and a six total ejected from that game. They will not be able to play in the upcoming NCAA tournament, the first round NCAA tournament game for either team. So. It was probably all bench players, but uh, just trying to figure out how that, how does this, that amazes me that that happens. Uh, and I, I guess I shouldn't say in a women's game, but in, in, a, in a conference championship game, 
at, at that level. I mean, I know you see this stuff at lower levels sometimes, but um, to see it at this level, I, I, I don't know. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, oh, wow. Uh, I'm wa- re-watching. See, somebody, people jumped over the, the, the I think a fan jumped over the scorer's table and got himself involved in in the fray. So this was just wild on all manners. But I'm going to tell you, LSU seems to just have a – let's see. I'm trying to be careful with my words. Um, Yeah, I see a guy that's – two guys – attempted to to come out of the stands and i'm like what the hell are you thinking it, it, first of all th- these are women out there and you're gonna jump out there a- as a guy I, I i don't understand what in the world uh someone here in the comments is saying that and i don't know how true it is but that the player who jumped over the ta- not the player that the the fan who jumped over the table was one of the players' siblings. Yeah, I don't, know I, that I don't fact, doubt that. But... I don't doubt that, but I don't even care. What in what world have you have people never seen things break out on courts or on fields before? Yeah, it happens all the time. Now, not in a women's game, usually not in a women's championship game like that, but it doesn't matter. This is that guy jumping out of the stands. The, to me, that is no different or it's worse than the malice at the palace. What are you going what was he going to think what did he think he was going to accomplish? Um it's that's just mind-boggling to me. But I have to say I'm not surprised that LSU was involved in this and was kind of the, they, they basically, their players basically started this. Um, LSU is just, uh, I'm not sure the word I want to use. Um, I'll just say without class. How's that? I don't think that they do things in a classy manner, and I think it starts at the top with their coach. I think she's very mouthy. Uh, She wins. I'm not going to take that away from her. But she's very mouthy. And I think that that is prevalent into their attitude. Um. I understand you have to have great confidence in yourself and all of that, but I don't think, uh, I think LSU has taken it to a different level of thinking they need to be a, the way they are uh, to, to express that. That's just my take on that, which doesn't mean much. Hey, uh, also lots of sound from yesterday after the game. John, who you got lined up first? Well, we only got one more left right now, and that's Mike Woodson. He talked about uh, basically just his decision to keep the seniors in and, and why he went with that late late in the game. So here's what he had to say. Well, I didn't really have to go back to the bench much. I, I was determined tonight to play the seniors because it was their night. So... X and Lil was going to stay in there no matter what. Um, you know, we shuffled Gabe in and out. and I don't even know if Walker saw the floor in the second half. He might have saw it for a few. But um, it's tough losing a key player. I mean, that's a part of sports. and um, But we hung in there. That's all I can tell you. We got the, the big stop that we needed coming down the home stretch and got the rebound to secure the win. 
he missed an opportunity to say we got over the hump finally or something i mean it would have been uncalled for but it would have been funny i think well three words that he did say that i if i was a fan i would take umbrage umbrage to is no matter what yeah and that's what i was thinking too whenever i was loading up that clip because if if the result for this game had been different and it maybe necessarily wouldn't have been Leal or, or Galloway or X's fault. Um, I mean, there would have been some backlash from saying he's going to keep the seniors in no matter what, because deservedly. So that tells me he's predetermining what he's going to do. Yeah. No matter the situation that he's not going to adjust that uh, this is not about an opportunity to get on him. I don't need an opportunity. He's providing it. You can't predetermine what you're going to do in a game. Every game is different. Every situation is different. Things change in games. So, uh, and also, he didn't have a lot of other places to turn to, to be honest. There was no one playing better than his seniors. Anthony Leo played outstanding defense. Didn't do much offensively, but he really played good defense. How are you not going to play X? Um, there's no way you're not going to play him. Of course you are. So uh, I, I think that's a disingenuous. I just think that's disingenuous personally. I think it's easy to say that after the fact, uh, number one. But number two, where else were you going to turn? You didn't have Trey Galloway. What are you going to do? So, there's One that. thing we can look at, though, since we do know the decisions of Galloway and Leal, they will return for their final year of eligibility. That, as of right now, leaves you with three open scholarships that includes the one that's already currently open for next season. Now, if you lose the likes of Kalel Ware to the NBA, definitely and of course, you, you, any you other well mark that down, mark that like, down. Like, we can assume Kalel Ware goes to the NBA. I'm, I'm, I think that's a safe bet. So yes. at the very least you will have four open scholarships to fill this off season. One of them was previously filled by Liam McNeely. That is no longer the case. So unless he's able to find some late additions to the recruiting class, this incoming class, if you will, if you want to call it that, will more than likely be entirely made up of transfers. And again, that I, doesn't even include those who may jump in the transfer portal. Guys like, I, I don't want to throw Caleb any Banks names out there gone. specifically. Ka- Caleb I will. Banks, Caleb I say Banks Caleb is Banks, Banks is gone. And that's probably the most likely. And again, you, you can't really assume anything. Um, but that would be at least based on his lack of contributions this season and the step backwards that he has taken in minutes. Dude, you haven't seen, he hasn't hit the floor and oh, I know he hasn't played at all recently, but even in general, when he has played, he, he really never made much of an impact this year. I mean, I, I, for him to get, he, he's been shut down. So either something, something had to go on. He's not been able to work his way back into any part of the rotation. And this is a guy who showed great promise uh, last season uh, with his hustle, with his uh, those hustle plays, grabbing rebounds, gritting those out, grabbing loose balls, things like that last year. This year, it seems like it just never, it never improved. And either... That lack, either a lack of effort. I don't know what it was. I, I'll be honest. With you, I have no idea. But there was, there's no doubt there is something that has caused a disconnect because he has not seen the floor. Um, I, if he came back, I would be utterly shocked. Real and quick, I only, have, only got two minutes. Does did Peyton Sparks participate in Senior Day yesterday? No, he's not a senior either. I mean, he oh, okay, gotcha. So he's li- he's listed under the junior eligibility. 
That's, I just, yeah. but he's with Galloway and Leal, but they're only junior eligibility because of the COVID year, obviously. Right. Anyway, um, and then I guess the last thing is the the wild cards. I mean, you could have McKenzie and Baco potentially jump in, at least, at least test the waters of the NBA. Well, he's definitely going to put his name into the NBA draft. And same with Malik Renu. To go through that process. Both of them will go through that process, and they should, because you find out things that you need to work on. Uh, it, it's, it's just suggested that they do that. Now... Mbako and Renu both, you have to also worry about them hitting the transfer portal and being, I hate to say this, but being purchased by another team, basically. And that's true. That may be what happened with Liam McNeely. We'll never know, but that could have been something that happened. One minute. Yeah, um, I think that had more to do with what was going on with the season and the fact that it came the day after and it was announced that, that uh, Woody was coming back. I just don't think that there was a coincidence there, but regardless. Hey, I can't thank everybody uh, for uh, tuning in today, first of all, but uh, also big thanks to Greg, Greg Straw with the ISC Sports Network. Make sure you uh, catch him on the IHSAA Network and uh, some great games coming up this weekend. Of course, the voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher, Travis Miller for Boiler Upload, John, the producer, for keeping us between the white lines. Most importantly, thanks to each and every one of you. We're back tomorrow to do this again. Mike DeCourcy from Big Ten Network and uh, the Sporting News will join us along with Chronic Hoosier and I think Mike, Mike Nyslack from the Bloomington Herald Times. Perfect. Well, uh, that and we'll get more. We'll probably have some more sound from over the weekend. I talked to A.J. Moye. We'll hear from him. Uh, and let's hear, we'll hear from, uh, uh, Sharon Wilkerson after, uh, their big win over Jeffersonville is, I mean, for Jeffersonville, uh, over Harrison until tomorrow. I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana sports beat radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana.